Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you are all having a great weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and this week, well, we got the design for these side covers figured out, thanks to you guys. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. So the plan for these covers, and if you haven't gathered, these are going to be the covers for the, I guess, the front face of the, like where the fuel fill is, as well as over on the starboard side. Um, but the plan here is that I'm going to be glassing these over while they're still oversized. Because uh, after, after the glass is cured on both sides, I'm going to have to come back and trim the edges off. Uh, but if I were to go through and actually cut each individual piece right now, well, that would just be three times more the amount of pieces that I'd have to trim off with the router. Whereas if I glass it, oversized right now I can just do my major trim tomorrow morning and then uh, do my cut my individual pieces out and it'll save me a lot of time because then when I cut it it'll already be trimmed now for doing this I'm gonna be using the uh, it's the two to one epoxy uh, with their slow hardener primarily because I'm out of polyester resin <laughs> I'm waiting for some more to come in uh, but right now this is all I've got so uh, epoxy it is Last week when I closed out the video, I asked for your help because uh, I was having a bit of a time. I was scratching my head trying to figure out the best way to kind of accommodate this with, with, the, with, the, with the fuel hose coming up, how to close it off, make it look good, but yet still be accessible. And you guys came through. Thank you. <laughs> you came through in a big way. A uh, little bit overwhelming. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think I got something like three or four hundred messages. Um, but that's good because in one of the, well, actually in quite a few of those messages, was the answer. Now, just as a quick recap, in case you didn't see that, uh, essentially what I was, I was leaning towards one of two options. Uh, either one was to use a PVC pipe and try and thread that in up through here. And while that sounded like a, a, a somewhat of a viable option at first, uh, I looked into it and technically it is allowed. I mean, I'm able to do it. You know, I'm not going to be breaking any uh, ABYC rules or, or uh, recommendations or anything like that. However, uh, paper didn't actually transfer over to actual application because here's a three inch PVC pipe that I cut the, uh, the flange off and 
Well, it ain't going to fit. <laughs> it's not, and when I say it's not going to fit, I mean it's not even close to being able to fit. Uh, in order for something like this to happen, I would have to notch out this bottom uh, at least another close to two inches, inch and a half to two inches. And I don't want to do that because as it is right now, uh, this is already sticking out a little farther than what I'd like. I mean, it's, it's not sticking out far enough where you're going to jam your toe because, you know, staying right here, if I lean up against this combing, my foot is still a good two, three inches away from the, uh, the, uh, the outside of this locker area. So it's fine where it's at, but I don't necessarily want to make it come out any farther because that, that was a concern that it, someone's going to bust a toe on it and that's a quick way to ruin a weekend. So the other, uh, the other option that I had come up with was to uh, basically make somewhat of a, a little bit of a dam, you know, kind of like a little U-shaped dam that basically would just, you know, uh, rise above the deck maybe an inch or so and it would just prevent water from being able to just free flow in through this, uh, in through this opening here. Now, the solution that, uh, that I don't know how I didn't see this. I mean, it, uh, quite honestly, it's so simple, it's, it's beautiful. But essentially what, uh, what, I, what a number of people have brought up was to, basically what they said was, well, rather than looking at having a, a solid cover going top to bottom, why don't you look at having, say, like, you know, a two or three inch trim piece across the top and along the bottom, you know, same kind of deal. Maybe have it come up to the height of where it starts to radius down, but have it come up about four inches, have that come all the way across, and have that be solid. So the sides of the, so these sides would then be glassed completely all the way around. This bottom piece, or the bottom plate coming down would be glassed to the deck that makes the entire area completely watertight. And then I would have just basically a removable panel from about here to here that I could just remove and you know, get access to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the fill line as well as the vent whenever it was needed. Um, beautiful idea. Uh, again, I don't know how I, didn't, how I didn't see that. I think it's one of those things where you, you know, sometimes you might be just a little bit too close to a project and to the obvious just completely eludes you. So I, I don't know. But uh, there was uh, one, one email that I got uh, by David, or from David D. I'm not going to say your last name, I just because I don't want to, I, I just don't like doing that <laughs> in case people don't really want to, in case you don't really want that information out there. But David D, uh, what he, he actually put together a, a SketchUp file for me. And it just, I looked at it and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is just so simple, it's, but it's perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. Uh, one thing that David had, and, and it's essentially what I just outlined here, but one, uh, one little detail that David uh, marked on there, which is a great idea, is on the top of this bottom, I guess, kick plate, I'm just going to call it a kick plate. I don't know what you I'd technically call it, but we're going to go with kick plate. But on the top, to have that as, a, as a, you know, some sort of a beveled angle, um, I think 45 degrees angled coming down might be a little bit steep, but you know, you know, it kind of go along with that logic, so that when this panel is in place, the, you know, the main panel right here, as water comes down, when it comes down to this kick plate, it's already angled, so there's no way that water can trickle in. So as you can see here, these, these side panels, they're not epoxied in yet, uh, but I wanted to make sure I could get everything dry fit to include the, the, the door and everything. I wanted to make sure everything could be dry fit just to make sure that everything is going to work. And then once that's done, then I'll pull everything apart, epoxy it, do my glassing and tabbing, you know, whereas, uh, where it's needed. Uh, so for right now, this is the panel that I'm going to be going with. And it's obviously, as you can see, it's oversized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down to the bench. I'm going to trim off a, uh, the kick plate, as well as like a top trim that's going to be maybe, eh, we'll call it roughly two inches.
<laughs> All right, so for tonight, really what I'm going to be focusing on is to just basically try and get these two side supports actually epoxied onto these, uh, these other knees. I'm not going to worry about bonding the tops and the bottoms, at least not for today. Uh, I want to get these things situated so where they're not, they don't have any movement uh, while I'm trying to actually do the final fitting specifically for the front door. So before I can actually epoxy these in, uh, I need to remove it and then I need to sand the inside edges of these other knees so that I actually ensure I get a good bond. Give this a quick wipe down, and we should be all set. All right, so for bonding this in place, I'm gonna be using the Total Wool, it's their Thixo Flex. Now, they also make a regular Thixo, one that it doesn't say, you know, have flex on it. And, and that would work perfectly fine here, I, it would. Uh, kind of the, I guess the, the one piece of logic that's going through my head as far as when I should use one over the other, or at least when I'm deciding to use one over the other on this project, is that areas that are gonna be prone to like a lot of flex, you know, and along mm -hmm. here we're on the sides of the hull, the hull's gonna move, you know, it's gonna flex a little bit as you're you know, running into waves and that kind of thing. So areas that are gonna be prone to flex, that's kind of where I'm choosing to use more of the, the, the thick sole flex. But like I said, you know, everything on here is gonna be so solid. Uh, you know, these knees are gonna be bonded onto these mm -hmm. knees, which are glassed onto the hull. Nothing would crack. I could easily use the regular thick sole, mm -hmm. uh, but, this is what I happen to have uh, handy, so this is what I'm going with. And there's a brand new tube. I've covered this once or twice before, uh, but as a brand new tube, there's a one thing that you kind of want to do before you actually start gunning this stuff out on your project. And that is essentially to get this nozzle primed. And real easy, the way to do that, you just pump some out. <laughs> So I'll usually pump out about yeah, two or three inches worth of uh, material. And uh, after that, then everything should be pretty well incorporated in the tip. And we should be good to go. Morning. These panels have been sitting overnight, so now the Thixel Flex has had a chance to set up. It's not going to be fully cured. It's going to take a few days for that to actually happen, but for right now, it's set up enough. Uh, so now I can I can start disassembling or disassembling things a little bit to try and get these doors fit. And really, the, the only part I'm going to be taking off is going to be this top, and this is going to be the uh, this is the actual door panel. And as you can see, it's a little bit long, uh, but I did that just in case there's a little bit of a whoopsie. Uh, I've already done the starboard side, and that one actually went pretty smooth. It looked out, it actually looked pretty nice. I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, but for this side, uh, hopefully this goes just as smooth. But like I said, the first thing I want to do, I want to get this top piece off and try and start getting the actual door scribed to the bottom as well as to this top edge. So in order to get this door kind of cut to the right shape and with the angles on the top and the bottom, uh, what I want to do is I want to set it in place and this panel is wider than the locker is. So it gives me a little bit of room on the sides to kind of play around with. Uh, but generally I don't want to do any more playing with it than I actually absolutely have to. So I'm at setting it in place. I'm not concerned about how this bottom seam looks right now. I'm trying to get this side, the edge of this panel lined up 
with the outside edge of this, just so that it's flush, so that it come time to trim, I really only have to trim one side of this board, or of this cover. So I'm going to leave it a little bit proud, because after this is in place, uh, I'll be able to come back in with a sander and basically edge sand uh, each, each side so it'll be absolutely perfectly flush with the, the sides of these knees. And then just using a compass, I'm just going to scribe the bottom to get this angle. And actually it doesn't look like it really tapers much at all. So this might actually already be at the right angle. Right now, what, uh, what I'm looking for in here is I just want to make sure there's a nice tight seam along this bottom. And, oh hell, that's right where we need to be. Let me go ahead and make some marks on here. I still need to actually trim this top off a bit more because I need to accommodate this piece. All right, so all trimmed up. I think it looks, actually I think it looks pretty damn sexy. <laughs> but I did notice a couple of things. Uh, while I was sanding, I was getting a horrible vibration on this panel here, right, where it's just kind of, where the top is just, was just vibrating off the, uh, off the sides. Um, but that's, that's gonna be an easy fix. And I was kind of anticipating that. Uh, I've got some, I think it's like 16th inch, maybe it's 32nd inch, it's, it's really, really thin. Uh, by like by half inch uh, like adhesive back uh, neoprene kind of a foam gasket kind of a deal. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put kind of a, a neoprene gasket on the back side of the actual removable lid. The, the tops and the bottoms, they're going to be actually glassed in place along the sides and along the bottom. Um, but I think I am going to put also, just to eliminate something like that, I think I'm going to put a little strip of the of neoprene gasket up inside of here, along here, so that the, the combing isn't able to rattle on the top of there. And I, that should take care of any, any kind of vibration, or at least dampen it down significantly. So, um, but I'm not gonna deal with that. That's, that's finishing details. That's after everything is painted, and those are like the last finishing touches. So right now, the next thing I wanna do, and I think it's gonna be the last thing I'm gonna be able to do yet for, uh, for this week, because uh, it's already Friday afternoon, uh, is I do want to go through, I uh, do want to come through and put a, a radius on both edges all the way around, just so it's got a nice kind of a rounded appeal, because er everything on this boat has some sort of a curve or a radius or is rounded in some form or fashion, and having just a hard head right here, it just, it doesn't look right. So let me, uh, let me pull these panels off, I'm going to give them, I think it's like a quarter inch round over, and uh, see what kind of difference that makes, appearance wise. Looks better. Uh, maybe still a little bit boxy. Maybe I could go with a little bit more of a radius along these edges here, but I don't know. I'm going to sit on it for tonight and kind of see what I think. All right. Time to do the other side. Actually, before I do the other side, 
Let me just do a, a kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of before and after. All right, so this is the one that, we j that I just routed, or rounded over down the edges. And it might be that the, the, the radius just isn't noticeable because there, I don't know, there's a couple of different colors going on. You got a lighter surface here, and then you get over to the dark gray. A lot of times when you have color variations, it's hard to pick up on uh, you know, any kind of subtleties like that. Okay, so that's the port. Now contrast that to the starboard side, which is still very much kind of hard edges. I mean, there is a difference. Oh well, it's too late now. Rounded edges it is. So now that these covers are dry fit and shaped, uh, now it's time to start kind of switching gears and trying to figure out how I'm going to glass all this in. Now, again, the whole point of this whole, uh, this whole deal was to try and make it waterproof for any water on deck uh, to make sure they cannot get inside that hole where the, uh, where the fuel line is going to be coming up. So I need to figure out how I'm going to actually glass all that in so that, it's, so that it looks good and it's watertight. And then I want to glass in this top just so that it's a seamless um, you know, kind of appearance. The, uh, the panel itself, that's, there's always going to be a scene there because it's, well, it's removable. <laughs> so there's going to be a little bit of a, uh, you know, a scene there. But I may uh, just kind of dress it up, have a nice little teak or mahogany strip, uh, you know, just kind of over the scene, just to kind of dress it up a little bit. But again, these are all details that I haven't quite sorted out yet. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to be something that's going to have to wait until next week. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button if you're not already subscribed. Hit that little subscribe button, love to have you on board, and that little notification bell, thank you in advance. If you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below, and as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. This has been the Boatworks Today Protection.